Howdy. Tubal Kane again from Illinois. I want to talk to you a little bit today about dovetails. Now I know I've covered uh, dovetails in one of my other videos in regards to adjusting the gibbs on the lathe, but uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, how to measure dovetails and uh, this is all in preparation for a video that I'm going to do in a little bit down the road on uh, cutting dovetails, but we need to uh, understand I think the uh, uh, how they're how they're made and how they're measured and this is the uh, compound off my atlas lathe and of course it's a machine slide and uh, we've got uh, dovetail and uh, this is the male dovetail right here and then the moving part here is the female dovetail I'm going to show you how to measure these real accurately but in in reality on most machines there's some way to adjust uh, a dovetail and uh, usually in the form of a gib and the reason for that is to allow for the wear of the machine over the years and also when they manufacture them they don't have to manufacture to quite such a close tolerance and uh, these can be adjusted uh, tight or loose on the machine depending on your operation so again those are dovetails now I'm going to show you how to measure dovetails in this next segment. I'm using my new sky cam again and I think that's a convenient way to hold uh, the camera while I'm talking. There are other kinds of dovetails too. This Here's a circular dovetail on the Atlas lathe and uh, the compound swings on that. I've got it off right now for so, I, so it's out of the way and so I can talk about it. And if you ever had one of these apart, you will remember that there are little pins and they are have an angle on them. And when we tighten the compound screws, it locks this circular dovetail. Aloris tool posts also make use of dovetails. This is a genuine Aloris, which I really like. And it's got two dovetails, one here and then one on the other side adjacent sides and we can tighten and loosen the tool holder by means of the lever and we've got a tapered gib I think that Aloris calls it a gib that tightens it and loosens it same thing on this side and there's the female dovetail Now this is an import tool holder, USA, I guess it's called, and uh, it also uses dovetails, but a different method of locking them. There's a plunger, I'm going to call it a plunger here, that goes in and out, and that pushes up against this surface right here to lock the dovetail on the tool holder. So there's different approaches to using dovetails. Now if you've got a south bend lathe that has a taper attachment or a, well a Logan, I don't know what brands, I know the Sheldon, they uh, incorporate a dovetail slide back here for the taper attachment. Atlas uses uh, a straight slide bar like this homemade one that I showed in another video. The Atlas lathe also uses dovetails on the cross slide. Now I've temporarily have the nut removed because I was doing a, a taper demonstration on this, some of you may have seen. And in order to make my taper attachment, I had to uh, make this slide here. This is made out of aluminum, but we've got a dovetail right here. And I did struggle with this. By the way, these are 60 degree dovetails. And that goes on there like, like this. Now I've got a pretty good fit here, probably better than what I needed. A little bit of slop and you'll see that it's about two thousands here when we do our measuring. And this is normally locked in position and there is a set screw right here where my finger is pointing. And a little brass plunger right in here, also cut at an angle, that locks up against the dovetail. Now let's measure this dovetail, the male. 
Now we're ready to measure the male dovetail. In order to do that, you need dowel pins or a very accurate uh, stock. It could be drill rod. I'm using quarter inch. It probably could be different sizes. That's not relevant because you're going to enter the dimension of these pins into the formula. Make sure everything is clean. No chips. Bring those up snug like that. I prefer using a micrometer over a caliper. I just think you get a little bit too much of this. So I'm going to use a 3 inch Mitutoyu and I'm going to measure it like this. And I come up with this dimension and we're going to call that S for the purposes of the formula as 2.377 inches for the male. So we'll set this aside and we'll go to the bench and measure the female. Now I'll show you how to measure the female. This is the part that I made and again it's 60 degrees and I used a 60 degree dovetail cutter. It's 3 quarters in diameter right here, 3 8 shank, high speed steel, 60 degree, did I say that? And uh, these are about 20 bucks from Enco. When you get into the larger ones they cost quite a bit more. They also make uh, you're going to run into 45 degree dovetails from time to time, but I believe that 60 degrees is a little bit more common. Now in order to measure this, again we're going to use the same dowel pins. Put one on each side, make sure everything's good and clean. And rather than use a calipers, in this manner, not my favorite method, it would work though. I prefer to use adjustable parallel. This is a sterret. And uh, I would like to lock this, but those little set screws are pretty well worn and I can't get it to, to lock. And then we just measure right across here with a micrometer. And we're going to end up with 1.375, which I had marked here. I like to mark everything with a magic marker. Even when you're making something, that can be quite helpful. An alternate way is if you have a, what we call a planer gauge. This is, in a way, just a, a self, um, or not self-adjusting, but it's a parallel. And that can be put in there like this. And you can even lock it, take it out, and mic it right across here. That's a good method because it locks, whereas my adjustable parallel does not lock. So now we have dimensions on the male and the female. If I may rant just a little bit, here's Machinery's Handbook, and it's about 1,800 pages. But in the entire book, we only have this small section right here on measuring dovetails. A paragraph, about two inches. And uh, But this is still valuable information, but you need to know your trig a little bit better in order to use this. And the method I'm going to show you it uses trigonometry, but uh, it, it's more painless than what they show right here, because this is, I think, the 1944 edition of Machinery Handbook. I went on the internet and found this information on measuring dovetails. I think it's better than what's in the book. And this is authored by uh, a Mr. Dick Kostelnik. I hope I got his name right, so I'm giving him credit for this. And uh, we've got several formulas here. so. We measured this already and we found S, if you recall, and there it is. So we're going to plug it into that formula where we are measuring, or we are finding T. So on the uh, female, we want to find T, and over here on the male, we, uh, we have to find T first, but then 
another formula will help us find y, which is the dimension here. So that dimension, y has to equal t over on the other side. Now it would do, do you no good at all to just measure right in here without the pins. The same thing on uh, the lathe. It has to be done by this method even though it seems rather complicated. Now I'm going to take you through those formulas step by step. If this is too much for you, you can turn it off. Okay, real quickly now, before we do these formulas and the math that I've got on this sheet, uh, remember back in your math classes uh, the order of operations. So real quickly, remember to do first any calculations that are inside the parentheses and take care of the exponents and the roots. Well, we don't have any exponents. Next, perform all multiplications and divisions left to right. And finally, do all additions and subtractions left to right. You may not need to do this, but uh, if you're doing any kind of math where you've got parentheses and uh, both addition and subtraction, you need to take care on these rules. Okay, now we're going to take the measurements that we uh, took off of the actual hard objects and we're going to uh, run them through these formulas and show you what the final sizes are. This is not the final size. That's the size that we took and we have to use formulas to determine the true dimension of T. So we're working on uh, the female first, this aluminum one that I actually cut some time ago. And on this sheet we have a formula here and the formula is T equals S plus D times all of this stuff. Well, Mr. Kostelik here has uh, given us a constant and so instead of using all of this we can use a constant of 2.732. So to find T on the female, which is right here, we use this formula and it is again T equals S and S is what we had right here plus and now in parentheses the diameter of the pins were quarter inch times that constant so in the next step it's 1.375 plus what we have in the parentheses here the uh, diameter times the constant and then uh, we've done a little math here and then the final answer is T equals 2.058. I'm not a math teacher so I'm a little bit on the awkward side in, in math but if you want to do uh, measuring of dovetails this is what you have to do. Now on the other one which was the male over on the Atlas lathe we ended up with you recall 2.377 and we have to solve two formulas. First of all we have to figure out what T is using this formula and then we will end up uh, looking for Y because Y here, this is Y, is going to equal T more or less. We have to have a little clearance in there. So in order to find T it's S minus the diameter times that constant. Do the math and we end up with T equaling 1.694. Now that 1.694 is needed in the next formula to find Y. And here we use Y equals T plus 2H times cotangent of 60 degrees. Now we've got to find H and H is this dimension here using your depth mic. Got to check the depth right here and the depth is 0.314. Also we need to find the cotangent of 60 degrees. Now that can be done several different ways and uh, several men on uh, YouTube have uh, advised me of other methods but I, would, I was using trig tables like this and using the trig tables look up 60 degrees and then find the cotangent 
and the cotangent of 60 is 0.577. Uh, I guess you can also do that with scientific calculators and also there's a, do a Google search and you can look up uh, and find all of this information on Google as well if you don't have one of those little tables but most machinists have those in their drawers. Alright using that information that I just gave you we're going to find y again y equals uh, again the t we found up here 1.694 plus 2 times the depth times the cotangent of 60 degrees do the math in your head if you can if not use a calculator I have to use a calculator myself or I can do it longhand but the uh, result here is 2.056 again the answer here on the female is 2.058 and on the male over on the atlas lay that uh, y equal 2.056 I circle them in a red here. Now notice that they are not the same. There's about two thousandths difference. Naturally we have to have a, a minor difference there and that would be uh, the tolerance. But if they were the same you wouldn't be able to assemble them. You'd have to drive them on with a four pound sledge. So uh, we've got a two thousandths clearance here which isn't very much when you think that the average human hair is around two thousandths. So that was a real good fit. And that, gentlemen, concludes this little lesson on measuring dovetails. And I, I had somebody that emailed me, why are you doing this? Sounded like one of my students. Well, I'm doing it because if you're actually going to cut dovetails, which you may not in your entire lifetime, but if you are, you need to know how to do this. Or if you're going to make an attachment to fit one of the current dovetails on some machine that you got, you would uh, need to know how to do this. Or you'll end up with an awful lot of scrap. In one of my upcoming videos, I'm going to make a thread stop. It looks something like this that will go on the cross slide of a South Bend lathe. So I will have to measure the dovetail on the South Bend by the method I just showed you. And then I'm going to cut a dovetail and make a piece like this. This particular one has a gib on it. I don't even know what this is from. This was just in my junk box. And this is made out of aluminum also, but I'm going to make something like this and it'll have a thread here. And that's, if you look up in the South Bend lathe book, you're going to see that they, uh, some people use a thread stop when they're doing single point threading. And uh, look that up, you'll see the reason why you might do that. It's not something I do very often, but I think now that I have a South Bend lathe that I'd like to go ahead and make one of those, so I got it in stock here in my shop. Hope this was helpful to you. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.